as the McCaw kicks it going. Who can forget Richard Kahui, the blockbusting centre who was also a gun winger? Now Richard lives here in Japan, playing his footy, fully embracing the culture. Kawai bro, so uh, we're in Japan. What's life like in Japan? Yeah, it's it's great. It's really great. Um, we're here at um, Okonetama Jingu, or Jinja. Yeah. Um, so we, we quite often come here as a team. So it's a sort of shrine where you come down and um, say your prayers. And we, we usually come here to open our season. Did you, did you ever think uh, when you were younger that one day you'd be living in Japan? No. No, never. And I remember telling my uh, Japanese teacher um, when he was Mr. Shu, Shu Sensei was his name, and he said, yeah, you have to learn your Japanese. I said, I'm never going to use it. I'm never going to need it. Why, 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 why do I have to learn it? And then here I am, six years later, thinking, oh, I just should have paid a bit more attention to my Japanese class. What else is great? Well, the kai, of course. Inase of Tats. Hey. Hey. Onegaishimasu. Do you ever get sick of this kai? Nah, never. Yeah. Never, I love it. I love it, I could eat it every day. Hey, well what have we got here? So we've got, a... uh, we got a bit of everything, we've got egg, um, uh, prawn, uh, kina, some salmon eggs, eel, and then your magaro, which is your um, tuna, and then some snapper in there just for the, just for the kiwis. I think of all the places I've been around the world, I wouldn't, I wouldn't swap meals in Japan for anywhere else. Yeah, not a hangi? <laughs> nah, not even a hangi, not even a hangi. It's a great life. Uh, I, I really enjoy being here in Japan. The, um, the food's great, the culture's great. Anybody that's travelled here for the World Cup will say the same. Um, and it's, you know, like in terms of the rugby, um, the rugby's been getting better every year, um, but there's, there's not many commitments around the rugby. So in New Zealand, you have uh, a thousand TV interviews and radio interviews and things like that, but things like this, oh, I, I practically never do them. Has had a very good debut, Kahui? Not only with the ball in hand, but his defence has been solid. The small town kid with humble roots who made it all the way to the top. Growing up in Tokoroa, I thought I had a, I had a really great childhood. You know, I had the, the mates all up and down the street. We used to come over. My dad put rugby posts up on the front lawn, so we'd all play rugby at my place or cricket or whatever. And it was just a really good, like a village environment. Growing up in Tokoro, everyone knows everyone. Everyone still knows everyone. It doesn't matter where you go, you always bump into a, a toke rat somewhere. There was only ever one goal for Richard, wearing that black jersey. Oh, yes, it's an emotional moment, particularly in your first chess match. Oh, an absolutely precious time for Richard Kahui, and it was written all over his face. He'll treasure that for his whole life. I wanted to be an All Black, and I wanted to be an All Black as long as I could. I um, never thought it would happen. And so then in 2008, when it did happen, it was, um, well, more than a dream come true. It was, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe. And even now I look back and I can't believe that if I see old games or footage, I can't believe that it's me wearing that jersey because it's, it carries so much mana and so much, it carries a lot of hopes and dreams of a lot of young kids, a lot of rugby supporters. And uh, yes, I, I feel uh, blessed to have had that opportunity. House, as you'd expect, 60,000 crammed into Eden Park. And Richard wore that jersey on one of the most epic rugby nights ever, the 2011 World Cup final, starting spot on the wing. Everything was on the line. The All Blacks had not won the World Cup since 1987. How uh, up there is that for like a tough game for you in your career? You have to put it down as probably the toughest. Um, certainly the toughest with the most on the line. In a World Cup final, you have, like we said before, the hopes and dreams of your country ride with you in that black jersey, and it had been so long, so we were under pressure to finally break the drought and bring it home. It was a great game, a really great game, and something that I, I hold really highly in my, in my memories as, as one of the greatest points in my rugby career. The Now, Richard plays for Toshiba Brave Lupus here in Fuchu. He's captained them for the past two years, but like so many rugby players offshore, it comes at a big cost. This is the Kahui family. Um, obviously the greatest day of my life, my luck, the luckiest day of my life, my wedding. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah, it's my wife Amy, uh, my son Jake, my eldest um, Scarlett and my, my baby. Yeah. Where I come, some, 
some nights where I'd eat my dinner at the table and just talk to myself and talk to my pitches. <laughs> In terms of uh, players playing overseas and without their fun, can it be a bit of a lonely journey sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, absolutely. Yeah. Um, families need to be together, right? And I know every, t every day that I'm here, it's a day that I'm away from my kids and my, um, my wife obviously misses the support of having me around. 2011 World Cup, you guys won. You are a big part of that team. A lot of us uh, back in New Zealand would have expected you to play to the next World Cup. Um, obviously injuries and that happen. Uh, just talk us through that. Like, yeah, I was just too weak. Yeah. Honestly, just my body is no good. So uh, my desire as a kid was to be an All Black, and then once I made became an All Black, I thought I just want, this is what I want. This is my dream. I want to live it as long as I can. Kahui played 17 matches for the All Blacks. There would have been so many more, but for the injuries. To 2011, when I was an All Black, um, I still had lots of injuries, missed lots of games. Yeah. I think I missed about 40 odd games mm -hmm. as, um, in teams that I was selected to play for, for the All Blacks. And I just remember driving home uh, for tr from training one day and I was sitting in my truck and it was raining in Hamilton as it always does. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I just can't. It was, I just can't do this anymore. The disappointment of being injured, the, the rehab process, um, and the not being able to do what I love, and that's play rugby. And what was happening with me is I'd do, six, I'd do my rehab for six months, I'd come back, play for six months, get injured again. So it became a cycle. And so over about three and a half years, every year I was getting an operation. And, and I think after my third shoulder, I won't say I was depressed, but I, I didn't feel happy and I didn't feel like I was me. Yeah, it was really tough for, for, um, for a year or so there, but um, managed to talk to enough people and uh, had enough support and um, met my wife, obviously, and um, it's, it changed a lot of how I felt as well. So it's important when you do get injured to have um, you know, a good support group, whether it be family or friends or teammates or whatever, because um, you definitely need it in, in, in those dark times. Despite everything, Richard managed the proud All Black career and a new beginning in Japan. So what's next? What does it feel like, you know, like uh, um, the, the idea that you might be hanging up your boots? Of course there's, there's nerves, um, knowing that post the season, post whenever it is, I'm going back to being, um, not being normal, but I'm stepping away from rugby, it's the only thing that I've really known for 15 years. Um, yeah, it is a little bit nerve wracking. Um, but also exciting and I'm looking forward to firstly getting back and just getting with my family and, and just finding something that we really love. See, building I really love, um, coaching kids is something that I've really enjoyed. Um, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm nervous but excited at the same time.